Today is your Dalit Kislev, the Rebbe's anniversary in the Rebbetzin, so we say Mazel Tov, not just to them, but to ourselves, because the Tzaddik and the Tzaddikis are part of the Jewish people, the inspiration for the Jewish people, and if it's there, Yom HaNisuyin, it has a relevance to us. So Mazel Tov to each and every one of you for your anniversary. Mazel tov. Now we're on, we're on page 193. We'll read the Kitzer. The Rashab yesterday Rebbe, really... One, one, what? Rebbe Dolphin, I'm sorry, we're on page 189, the Kitzer. What? No. We started yesterday the Mimer, the third... Oh, you're right. You, 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 you're right. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, so actually we, we finished the Mimer yesterday. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're on page 189. Thank you. I could, we can always rely on Moshe to give us the right place. Beautiful. Anyway, I like that. I like when my students are sharp and they, they catch their teacher by mistakes. It's good. I'll call upon him that Ashab yesterday gave us a heavy dose, at least I think it's a heavy dose, of Musr. And we needed to hear it. And um, hopefully we will walk away and learn something from it. So let's see what he says in the kids how he, how he recaps it. Ha'odam betivoi yesh le moira shehazulos le yedam in yonov. A man by nature is fearful that his friend, that another person should not know about his matters. Umagam in yonov haroyim. Including in that is his bad behavior. Yaakov, I made a mistake. We're starting now with the 13th mimer. I apologize. I gave you the wrong information in a moment. But read, right now we're reading the Kitzer at the end of the 12th mimer. Okay? The Rebbe brought, the Rasha brought the Gemara. At least one should have as, as much fear as one has for a human being, Gishah for Hashem. Man through his speech and his movements, Tnuasov, his movements, Megala, he reveals Oimek Hora Sheboy, the deep evil and bad that he has within him. If he has that within him, your speech and your and your body movements bespeak that ugly behavior, that ugly condition. And Hashem says, you want to hide? You think you're doing it in private? I'm going to publicize it. Your cherpa, your shanda, publicly. The yetzer hara, through his pachas, I mean, like his, his quickness, his alertness, his, his uh, rushing, mekabel shtusim, he receives the shtusim of the Yetzir Hora, and he convinces man that no one will find out, and you could do whatever you want. Let's go now to 191, Maimer Yud Gimel Perek Aleph. The Rebbe continues, the Rashab has not finished his psychological analysis of this condition. More so, another ill evil of, of of a sickness that a malady that one has very familiar we're always right in hebrew we call that whatever i do i no it, it, it can't be a sin it can't, it's ex, come on i'll explain it to you Man by nature, whatever the matter is, good or bad, whether it be um, opinions, whether it be uh, in, uh, character issues and conduct, whether it's matters between Hashem and, and, and man, I'm sorry, between matters between Hashem, man, and God, whether it's matters between man and another person, whether they're matters between one and oneself, 
im agavur who teiv he ne who teil me yachsilatzmi. If the issue is a good thing, he says, I get credit for it. It's because of me. I'm the big. I'm the greatest gift to mankind since a slice of cheese. But if it is something that is evil and bad, he knew it. It's my fr- my fault. It's my friend's fault. It's my parents' fault. It's my rabbi's fault. It's my grandmother's fault. It's everyone else's fault except me. Says the Rebbe, the condition is self indulgence, self love, self pity. Because by nature we love ourselves. Who comes first without refining ourselves? The self. I want what's best for me. I want to pleasure myself. I want to feel good. Everyone else take a, takes, takes a second seat, second opinion, second idea. Anyway. So therefore, so he says, one's self-love, Zoe's. Not only does it cover his own iniquities, he doesn't feel at all that he is guilty of this act. He says, I'm, I'm actually right for doing it. I'm actually right. Not only am I not guilty, I need to do it this way. And he explains why. Next paragraph, he explains why. It's it's true. It's in the sp- that um, immaturity, harbe yaldus means immaturity within him causes him to do certain things. It's also true that bad friends cause him to do things. And the Rebbe then says, "Look, Moshe, when they come together, his immaturity." And his bad friends. And this is so interesting because we have this today with a lot of the youth. Either the, the friends influence them, or they're immature, or if you get a, if you get a, a good two punch, you get the, both of, the best of both worlds where it's both together. And then you're really in trouble. <laughs> because they don't have the seichel, they don't have the maturity to, to realize what's going on here is so, so bad and detrimental for, for oneself. So I decide they're like babies, like they're immature, right? And by the way, it can be an old man to be immature in a certain issue. So the immaturity aspect and the friend and the friends you have, the influences. I don't want to go into this, but sometimes you have people who end up in bad relationships, breaking relationships, and it's because of friends. You have to be very careful with what you share. With friends, even people who are your real good friends, but if they have a certain shita, that's a certain opinion about a certain area, that's not Torah, not and and and, and they're going to they're going to tell you, you know, you shouldn't be in this relationship, or you should be, and on and on. So you have to be very careful to discern, even with a friend, what you tell them, and especially and not only what you tell them, if you even if you share it with them, which not always should you share everything, to follow what they say. Not just because they're a friend, or frankly, even if they're your rabbi <laughs> or teacher. It has to be looked at very carefully. Now, not, now so you'll say, what do you mean if you're a rabbi? If the rabbi says so-and-so, isn't he basing it on Taita? I don't want to go into that, that, that discussion because it's a whole, it opens up a whole discussion, you know. Someone went by the rabbi once. The rabbi spoke about making mashpiyam. You know, I say lechorav. The rabbi came out with a campaign, I think, in 1986. Everyone should get themselves a mashpiyam. So someone went by the Rebbe for dollars, and he said something to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, like, and who told you to do this? He said, my mashpia. The Rebbe said, get yourself another mashpia. So, you know, you're going to say, oh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe knows better. He's a Rebbe, ba 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 I, I like to take it at face value. Sometimes your mashpia gives you bad advice. It's not the advice for you. It's the advice of someone else. And because he doesn't take the time or doesn't have the time to discern and really look carefully at your situation, he gives advice that he gave to someone else, and it's not, it's not for you. So every situation has to be taken carefully. So why do I say this? Because we learn here in the Mimer about bad friends, bad influence. So it brought to, to mind this idea, what, is a bad friend mean only someone who's, who's, who says bad things? It's, no, it could be someone who's really a, a good, genuine friend of yours. But nevertheless, they, they, they either don't know you that well, or they don't know the situation that well. 
And therefore, their advice in this situation doesn't apply. And one shouldn't feel, I'm, I can't be the friend afterwards. You know, the Friedrich Rebbe writes in <coughs> his famous Mimer, which I think we learned once in Baruch HaMeshul 1924, where he speaks about the three steps for giving criticism. Very important Mimer. In Baruch HaMeshul 1924. And one of the things that he says this is there is, if a person who gives criticism and the person is upset that the person who the criticism was given to, even a, a spouse, even a friend, etc., they don't listen to what, the, what, you, what you say and you, it bothers you, then you are not genuine in giving criticism and you shouldn't give the criticism. Because it shows... <laughs> that, that it shows that you have an agenda. And if you have an agenda, you're in no position of giving criticism. And this is a very, very important thing, that when, you, when, when we give criticism, we should be genuine. How are you genuine? You should be agendaless. It needs to be leman ho'inyan. Leman ho'inyan. Not because it touches me a certain way, or touches my kids a certain way, or touches my community. You know, the f- famous argument... Don't go outside this way because everyone is going to speak about us. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm not of those that, you know, poo-poo that completely. I don't. Because there is a concept called minigamokim, the customs of the place. And one needs to be respectful. At the same time, we need to explain that we don't do it because of others. We do it because of Hashem. Because what's right and what's wrong in Hashem's eyes. Now, notwithstanding that, there is a community. And, and, and we should be respectful of the community. So they don't have to be mutually exclusive. In fact, they can go, well, hand in hand. The Rebbe, for example, they say that when he went into his room, his, his room, his little room there in 770, where he, da- where he learned and, you know, and, uh, you know, there all day working and learning and answering people's letters and having Yechidas there when he had Yechidas and all that. He would take his kapot and his hat off right away after Mincha. He would go into Mincha, was 3.15, 3.30, Mincha finished. He would go right back into his office. And he would like, take, his, take it off. Right? When he came out, he came out with a hat and a jacket. There was a certain way that, it, that, he, that, he, that he felt that he needs to appear before people. So, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there is a sensitivity. The Rebbe spoke once of Fabrengan, I remember, about the Levushe Koyen Godl. The garments of the Kohen Godl. And he made the point that the Kohen Godl had garments specifically for the way he appeared in, in public. Because he's the Kohen Godl. The job re- warrants and requires a certain type of dress. When you're not on the job, meaning when you're in your own chambers and you're not in the public's eye, you don't have to dress that way. Of course, you still have to dress sneers and, and, and like I mentioned, all that. But so I'm just saying that when we talk about chaveirim, we must know that that um, the issue. So let's go back to the text because it's very interesting. So he says, so what if he ha- if it's immaturity and if it's the bad friends or both that cause him to do the, 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 the bad behavior and have the, 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 the warped opinions, he is guilty of choosing such a community? And such bad friends. Now, <laughs> here comes the argument. My parents moved here to Eretz Yisrael when I was too young to say no. And I'm, I don't like it here. And I don't want to be part of this culture. The dilemma with the teenagers in Eretz Yisrael. And there's some truth to that. They were too young to object to the parents moving there. So, you know, but here we're talking about a situation that's not like that. The situation is where Abel is who be atzmai oshem bezeh. He is guilty. Shebochol echaveirim roim usvivero. While koponim ain't it zorich lahashim rakezulosei. So the Rebbe says, the Rashab says, all he has to do, the one who's doing these things, is find some kind of fault with others. More specifically, just to justify what he does. And it all comes and stems from one thing self love. I must justify what I'm doing. So I will always find justification. Why? Because I love myself so much. What do you mean I love myself so much? In other words, the idea 
of going against the grain, making yourself uncomfortable, that it's not the way, it's so unnatural. That's what the Rebbe says. It's so unnatural for man to do that. But yet that's what Hashem wants. So the Rebbe is saying here that this condition that we're identifying here is normal. It's teva. But yet it's not an excuse because we are guided by teva. So it's interesting. So in other words, let's say, let's say for a goy, a non-Jew, who doesn't have this mission, there's nothing wrong for him to justify his existence and, and to want to, you know, be comfortable at all times. For a yid, it's not about self, it's about Hashem. That's what he says here. Let's continue. The Befratze Nechshog Lepom Gambali Shuva says that Rebbe now, in this detail, even Bali Shuva, who've done Shuva, make a mistake. Hagam Shehein Bacharal Tegmura Lusidis Adovar Aletoyev, although they are with complete regret for the no good that they did it. Previously, whether they did or they spoke, or the thoughts that they had, with Hurim Royim, the bad thoughts, and they have real regret. And they cry with the frustration and bitterness of the heart. Inside, they're broken. I, I, you know, and I do tshuva. I hate what I did. I was wrong. I didn't know. And that's it. Hashem, forgive me. And you go on. Hashab <laughs> is really laying it into us. He says, nevertheless, what did they walk away with? I didn't know any better. So what I did is not my fault. So they're being matzdik esatzmai. They're justifying and making themselves correct. Umaytzi kama sipas kama Yoni, do you mind uh, uh, muting yourself, please? They find all kinds of excuses to hang their shtus on. I was this, I was that, I was here, I was there. Here's another excuse. I'm hot-headed. I'm hot-blooded. By nature, what is it? Hillel, I'm a type A, I'm a type B, and a type C, and a type D. All the excuses. So what do you want from me? I was born that way from my mother's womb. I get very excited, I get very angry, I get this, I get that. Here's this is part of the argument, the excuse. Since I am Murutach, I'm boiling, I'm by nature, I'm a Moroccan. The Moroccans are hot-headed. <laughs> what do you want? That's the culture. Sorry, I hope I didn't find anyone here who has a Moroccan wife if you were relatives. But you know what I'm saying. When the natural passion and 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 and, and um, emotions overtake the person, Yachim Levavi, his heart becomes on fire, heated up. When and he can't stop himself from being angry. Or speaking or thinking inappropriate thoughts. He can't, he can't stop himself from doing. We had the discussion yesterday, Moshe, right? The charlatan, not the charlatan, the shyster. I was born into a family of shysters. My father was a shyster. My grandfather was a shyster. Go back to Europe. Go back here. I can show you. I, I traced it. So what do you want from me? It's in my blood. You know, we say in Yiddish, there's a ganif, and there's an outer ganif. The other, one second, he'll say it. We can, we can say in connection with these Parshas, what do you want from me? Lavin was my grandfather. Mm-hmm. They say, What's worse than a, a nar? A nar is a fool. An alta nar, an old fool. <laughs> you know, it's enough that I'm a fool, but an alta nar, that my father and grandfather were fools, or that I became an alta nar. When you were young, you were a nar, you were a fool, okay. You remained a nar even when you're 75? My gosh, that's really wor- bad, you know? So here we're talking about a situation where a person will justify 
So here we're talking about about tshuva. Every one of us in our tshuva. But we, we, we look back and we say, the reason I did that is because I was raised in such a climate, and I come from such parents, and such a community, and such a rabbi, and blah, 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 such culture and such a finances. Says the Rebbe, it's all excuses. All excuses. And it has to bother you to, to, to come to a place where you don't justify what you did because of the excuses. Let's continue. The Agam Shehidea Ki Osuhu, the Rebbe says, we're talking about someone, not, you see, we're talking about someone who knows better, Moshe, not someone who doesn't know. He knows it's forbidden to do A and B, C, whatever it is. He destroys his soul and does it anyway. And the Rebbe says that sometimes his behavior weakens his body. He's talking about all kinds of probably sexual indulgences and things like that. Or even the overeating, whatever, whatever, whatever the issue is. Eating treif unhealthy food, fast foods. <laughs> So why doesn't he stop himself? If you know you're getting sick, why don't you stop yourself? Because he can't control the heat of his body, the passion, the boiling anger. Well, upon him, next page, he may, 193, Here's another excuse. The Rashab is, 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 is like creeping into our mind and giving us, you know, what people use as excuses. Yonis, and what's the next excuse? That he says, he says, Sheh, my friend, it's my friend, Kiploini Hasisoi Vito Medelecha My friend convinced me, my friend who I like, and so bright. He convinced me, and he taught me, and he this, and he that. But I myself? Well, I wouldn't do it. But because I have such a good friend who's so smart and so good and so genuine, and he told me that this is a good investment, and, and, and you just have to sign, and you just have to lie a little bit and do this and that, and no one will know. Blah, 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 blah. Therefore, I did it. So, what do, so, so, so this is an interesting paragraph that the Rashab starts off saying, uh, it, it speaks in the beginning, Dvarim Zenech Shalom upon Gambali Tshuva. You hear? In other words, he's talking, he's talking about people who've done Tshuva for whatever the, the issue is. Nevertheless, they, 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 they look back at what they did and they said, I was justified in doing it. Says the Rashab, that's a mistake. Even if you, you've done Tshuva, fine. But the justification that what you did then, it, that you say is right and good, that's your mistake. And he tells us why. That was, that was the emphasis in this paragraph. Next paragraph. The Be'emes, he nikol ikin is not slusoy. His not slusoy means his excuse. His Eine elo hato shemate atzmei pnei avas atzmei. He repeats. It's really only because of one thing. He fools himself. Self love, Veradzu, he asiba mashematzdi katsmai. This is the cause why he, 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 he justifies himself. It boils down to one thing I love myself. It's all about me. Me, me, and me. That's what it's about. The hine hataina dak boros chaimateva. Now the Rashab says, Well, what about the argument that we mentioned that it's my boiling blood? And it's my nature, and I was born that way. Ain't a tiny bemis. It's not really a, a truthful argument. Why? Sharechei ma TV. Who manefesh a TV sabamis? Where does it come from? From the animal drive that's full of passion. Valzed nit nil nefesh alikis. That's why Jew was given a godly soul. She is gapin al nefesh a TVs, which can overpower the natural soul. And that's why you, we were created by Allah mean, on this earth. To augment the nefesh elikis and have it overpower the, the natural soul. You'll notice he's, it's interchangeable here, Yaakov, between the words nefesh ativis and nefesh habamis. Okay? 
because the nefesh habamis is the teva ha'odam. When we say that a Jew is nefesh alikis, is neshama, that we mean that the etzim in his essence. But outside of his essence, what drives man? The nefesh habamis, the nefesh ativis. Next, let's continue. The Rashab says, if not for this avoda, to subjugate the natural drives, the natural soul, we would not be created at all. Hashem doesn't need Mr. Einstein. Guess what? He doesn't need us. He wants us for one purpose. He has enough smart angels and souls and celestial beings. If he wants smart, he can get him over there. That's why, by the way, the al in chapter 36 in Tanya, when he talks about why was the world created, and he gives the reason to make a dira betachtoinim, an abode for Hashem on earth. So the Rebbe Rashab, this Rebbe, in his Maimar Yom Tov Shorosh of 19, uh, of um, 1905, which in Hebrew is Tofre Samavov, known in Chabad as the famous series of Maimarim known as Hemshech Samavov. So in the first Maimar there, he discusses what the Arizal brings in Eitz Chaim. Eitz Chaim has brought the idea of Taimei Habriya, reasons for creation. And he brings three reasons. And one of the reasons is, begin the, he brings the Zayar HaKadosh, which says, begin the Yishtamudin Lei. Why did God create the world? Because he wants us to know him. Ask the Rebbe Rashab on the reason, on this reason, is this really the reason why God created the world? To know Him. Who, who knows God better? Us or the angels? The angels. Who knows us, Hashem better? Us or the souls as they are on high? Who knows Hashem better? The celestial beings who are, who are pure compared to what we go through? Of course they. So how can the Zoya say that the reason why Hashem created the world is f- we should know him. So the Rashab is Masber in that mimer, very important mimer. Rashab says that it is a reason, but it's not the ultimate reason. Yoinison, you remember learning this? Yoinison Bates, Bates. You remember learning the reasons in Samach Vav? Hello? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember learning uh, Samach Vav in... Uh... No, I didn't learn some about in, uh, in this year. Oh, okay. So you learn it now from me. I'll call upon him. So the Rashab says, listen to this. The Rashab says that it is a reason, because the Zoya says it's a reason, right? Hillel. But it's not the ultimate reason. What is the ultimate reason? Lasses lawyers Baruch Dina Betachtainim, Pedic Lamed Vav, chapter 36 in Tanya. God wants to have a home here. Get, get started, get working. Why? It's a taiva. It's a spiritual lust. And as the language of the Alter Rebbe is, Afa taiva is nit ken kasha. When it comes to a, an infatuation, you can't ask why. Why are you infatuated? Because I'm crazy. I don't have a reason. I'm just infatuated. Hashem had a spiritual infatuation to create the world and say, right here he wants us to do mitzvahs, he wants us to make a, a, a place for him. Why? The whole question why doesn't begin in the world of infatuation. The whole question why begins in the world of reasoning, including in the, in the world of the reasoning that why God wanted this world so we should appreciate him. So the, the Rashab says, so in the world of reasoning... The reason that the Eitz Chaim gives that God created the world for the purpose that we should know Him here is a good reason. But that's already the world of reason. When you go beyond, you transcend the world of reason, that's not a reason because reasoning doesn't make sense there. So, so what, what is it? He had a taiva. Yes, Yaakov. So Lovett says that we weren't busy with all that um, uh, binion and, and making this world and we'd be... Uh, Falling into a virus. That's what keeps us out of trouble. Oh, yeah, I have to. 
<laughs> to respond to that would take another half hour. That, that is not, but briefly, Hashem didn't make a world to keep us out of our virus. He had that already with the angels. What he needs us for? <laughs> if, if that's the reason he had it already. Again, and first of all, it do, in the Eitz Chaim, it doesn't mention that at all. That's not one of the reasons given in the Eitz Chaim. There's three, three reasons. That's not one of them. But even if we were to argue that uh, some place we could find the source for that and, and maybe we can but that's not the, ulti- that's not the ultimate reason because the same question that the Rashab asks on the Zohar on the beginning of Yishtab Moedunlei the Rashab would ask on this too and then there's another section another, another there's more to elaborate to answer your question but I don't want to do it right now let's continue so the Rashab says is I, I got off on this tangent because he says here, look at the line. If it were not for the avoda that we're charged to subjugate our natural self, Avi, we wouldn't be created at all. No one needs us. God doesn't need us to just be a flute and tootin' intellectual, and, and, you know, he wants us to work and to change ourselves. To change the way, you know, there's a famous, there's a famous um, word to the previous Rebbe and the Rabbeim, that the whole purpose of Hasidus is, is to change your natural midos. So there's two things. There's midos tivium, there's, there's, uh, there's uh, natural midos, and there's the nature of midos. It's two separate things. Natural midos are like the, the behavior that is, that is not refined. Then there is refined hate behavior, but if you're accustomed to it and, you're, and it's your norm, you have to change that itself. And that's why Dalton Rebbe says in Rabbi chapter... Dalton. Give me a second, Avi, one second. That's why Dalton Rebbe says in chapter 15 in Tanya, quoting the Gemara, that if you learn only a hundred times the section of the Gemara... You review it. But you don't chazer it 101 times as the Alter Rebbe. The Gemara quotes it. You're a loy oivet. You're not an oivet Hashem. You're not a servant. You're a loy, loy avodoy. Why? Because in those days, the Alter Rebbe explains, the custom was to learn everything 100 times. So learning how things have 100 times, you didn't break your nature. That's, that's normal. One more time. Just one time more. But it's breaking your nature. Oh, then you consider a servant. Yes, Avi. Yeah, so I hear that we have self-love, we justify, and we have to, mit gaber, overcome our animal nature and, uh, and cling to our uh, holy nature. But this, it, 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 it doesn't seem to be a delineation of the steps of the how to mit gaber. You know, like, good. <laughs> person wants to lose weight, he has to. To walk a half hour a day, uh, three times a week, it is a how. Okay, so A, we have to read, we have to continue seeing what the Rashab says. Maybe he'll t- tell us. Okay. And if not, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll never talk about it because Hasidus is full of what, of, uh, your, full of many, many pages answering your question, but you're, you're right in your observation. Let's continue. So he says, the Hare, you see, this is what I told you earlier. There are plenty of angels that serve God with loving God and fearing God. And they're constantly in a subservience to Hashem. So why was man created? Ella, the answer is They don't have a yetzahara. There's no novelty to their avoda. Therefore, man was created. Yes, by yetzahara. The yetzahara. And therefore, she yagbers a yetzer toif, his yetzer toif should overpower al yetzer hara. Uvezehu goyrim tainug lemayad de lemayla, with this overpowering, he causes pleasure in, in heaven to Hashem. It's had a chidush, because he does something novel. It's a chidush. Pavay dosay. Kumash kosu mokamacher, as the Rashab says, as explained elsewhere. And what if 
the person is so hot-headed and so passionate and so hot-blooded that the person, even this argument that we just used to subdue the person's nefesh abamis doesn't work. This doesn't work. The Rebbe says, you know what, my friends? If you really are in touch with your nefesh elokis, it has stronger koiches to overpower the mishigas. And it has the ability to control your natural hot-blooded anger. Because we do not, Hashem does not give a challenge to man that he cannot handle. As the rabbi saying, Supis, Lefum Gamla Shikhla, based on the camel's strength, is its load. Oh, it's heavy, it's heavy. But this is the truth. Hashem gives each and every one of us an avoider. And sometimes it's so heavy, it's so hard. We have to be mechazek ourselves and know the fugam lo shichna. Hashem says, you have something that no one else has and you can do it and the other person can't do it. And that's why you have it and I have it and the other person doesn't have it. The Rebbe writes, the Rebbe explained in 1976 when the soldiers that were, were, that were injured in the Yom Kippur War came to New York to tour and they made a stop. They wanted to be in 7-7. They meet the Rebbe and the Rebbe spoke to them. The Rebbe said that you shouldn't be called um, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, injured. Nichei. Nichei Nichei Yisrael. The injured, in, the invalids of Israel. The Rebbe said, you are Mitsuyane Yisrael. You're the most excellent of Yisrael. And the Rebbe did not just say it to make them feel good. He went on to explain, I'll be Kabbalah. Mamish, you have to see the Sicha. How, in fact, this is the Mitsuyut. And what is, and he, I mean, based on what the, his grandfather, his great grandfather, Tzemach Tzedek, writes in Derech Mitzvah Secha. And you could learn it yourself and check it out. With the Tzemach Tzedek says, Someone who was, an in, who was invalid to be a Kohen in the base of Mikdash because he had a blemish, really comes from a higher place. But the R is so high that it cannot find comfort in this world, so it comes out in a blemish. What do we understand from this? That, that whether we ourselves are blemished, you know, we have, a, we have an injury, or whether we have a child with an issue, or whether we have a friend with an issue and all that, etc., that's a shlichus, it's a mission, it's an opportunity. Again, to wish for these things, it's against the Torah. But if from on high Hashem gives it to you, then it's for you to work with in a positive way, and not like some people out here say, get rid of the kid. Why should you suffocate the whole family because of this one child? There's a shita from Rebbes. From Rebbes. I don't want to go into it now because it's, it really irks me in a bad way. Where they'll advise parents to institutionalize their, their child because it's going to be a shame when they have to go for, 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 for shiduchim, on and on. I'm not saying, you know, sometimes, sometimes there is validity for institutionalization. I, you know, I understand. But that's the reason... That's the reason? Yes, Hillel. Are, are, are you talking about situations like if you have a Down syndrome baby, yes. that sort of thing? I've heard about cases like yes. that. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And not just babies, Hillel. Teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it seems to be an astonishing inconsistency. I, 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 you know, it, it, it's, it goes so deep that, you know, I don't want to talk about it. It's too emotional. It's interesting that Rebbe used the word Rashab, Mistama. Very interesting. Look what he says. Look what he says here, Yoni. And since one was born with this passion and hot bloodedness and anger, blah, 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 Mistama. I don't know why. He says, probably. 
It's interesting. Why is it? Probably Nitnu Lekaychus Ruchnim, he was given the spiritual Kaychus. Gam Ken Chazekim. That are very strong, that he's able to overcome. I, 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 it's very interesting to me. This, I just, this language is Tama. Before he brings the Gemara, Lefum Gamla Shichna, based on the, 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 the donkey, the load is based on the donkey's back, the ability to carry, implying that this is the way it is. Why does he, why does he use the word the Stama here? I don't know, but that's what he uses here. But one thing's for sure, from what we learned now, and we'll finish with this, is that. A yid must know that whatever challenges you have in our life, it's it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. That that's it. Okay, and those that and I'm telling you, those that are able to that take that and and work with it succeed. It doesn't mean to say you know the illness is going away and the problem is going away. No. Okay. Let let's not be you know. I mean, the Abishta can do everything and will do everything, but. But the question is, how do you go through life? How do you deal with a, with a loss, chas v'sholem? How do you deal with a COVID? We've been speaking about this for months. How do you deal with this issue? You know, I mean, you know, I, I'm reminding myself now, this week, last year, I told you I was in Warsaw, and then I went on to Moscow. And today I was communicating with some people from Moscow about something that I need to know about, whatever, from something I'm writing, and I, I'm reflecting on it. Wow, what a year! I just was standing over there in Varsha, and then I went to my mother's where she was born in Makov, and then to my grandmother's uh, shul that she had her wedding in, and the rabbi. And I know the rabbi's family out here in Borough Park, great grandchildren, and all that. And 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 what? And here we are, a year later. I walked down Thirteenth Avenue. I'm sure you have it all over. It's sad. It so breaks the heart. Businesses are closed for sale signs, for rent signs. It's a mess. <clears throat> so, lefun gam shichne, yeah, lefun gam shichne. And if you orient yourself to that, you'll be happier. You 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 you'll be more successful, and you will do things, maybe including reorienting your business practices. And, and, you know, and adjusting. Sometimes we get stuck in a certain rut, you know, and you need a, excuse the expression, a kick in the pants. <laughs> well, Hashem gave us a very big kick in the pants this year with the pandemic, okay? And now, take that kick and, and turn it around to be an aid for us. Hevra, have a great day. L'chaim to everyone. We should only have simchas. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Zaygazon. Tufu Shalema Yoni to your father. Fushalema. Zaygazon. Bye bye.